Hi, I'm back with another Halloween project and that is a shadow box card with lots of layers. To create these layers I'll need a card base out of black cardstock. You can see the measurements in the screen. And these dies are from Pinpoint Rectangle Layers by Memory Box. I use them to cut out a panel that is the size of my card, then a frame and two smaller panels that fit within the frame. I have used the two largest dies from the set to do this. Next I'll be using a die called Creepy Forest Collage. It's by Poppy Stamps. I'm positioning it onto the largest panel and then I'm going to run it through the die cutting machine. This die cuts out a shaped window. If you are interested in supplies, they are listed on my blog and in the description with links to online stores. Next I'm going to take two smaller panels and apply Wilted Violet Distress Oxide ink. I don't cover them evenly with the color because I'm going for a foggy effect. Then I will also apply some ink onto the card base. No need to go to the very corners, just in the center. Then I'm going to spritz all the panel with uh, some water to create that oxidized look. When all the ink is dry, I'm going to start creating my layers. I'm going to secure a purple panel at the back of the card temporarily with a piece of washi tape. Then I'm going to position a border die on a purple panel and tape it down. This die is from Stitched Cloud Line die set by Poppy Stamps. To create the next layer, I'm going to place the first one at the back of the card and then place a new panel on top. And then I'm positioning the next die on a purple panel and die cutting it again, just like I did last time. And I'm going to repeat this process for one more remaining layer. Now when all the layers are ready, I can add a little bit more ink into them. I'm going to apply some Picket Fence Distress ink onto the card base and onto the third layer. Then I'm adding some Wilted Violet Distress Ink, not Oxide, to the second and first layers, because I want those to be a little bit darker than the third and fourth one. And finally I'm going over the edges of each layer with a little bit of Black Suit Distress Ink. When I'm done inking I can start assembling all my layers. I'll be using some strips of black craft foam and uh, tacky glue by Scotch. You can totally use uh, mountain foam, but I prefer this craft foam because it's black, it's twice as thick as the craft foam, and besides I have uh, lots of scraps that I just want to use up. So I'm sticking all the layers one on top of another and then I'm, I can attach them to the card base. To create my focal image I'll be using these uh, dice from uh, Vincent House die set by Poppy Stamps. I'm going to color the bottom layer with uh, Spiced Marmalade Distress Oxide ink. Then I'm going to apply some Wilted Violet on top very lightly with my finger 
and this will reveal the debossed texture of windows and it will also bring down the bright orange. To color the house I'm using wilted violet again and I will use the same color for the roof. Then I'm applying some black suit distress ink on top with my finger. Now I'm going to assemble the layers and I'm going to trim off the top floor of this house just to make it a bit smaller. Now I can attach this house to my scene with the liquid glue. To create a moon I'll be using the Unicorn ink by Hero Arts. I'm going to load up my blending tool really heavily with this ink and press it down firmly. As the ink dries it will pick up some of the purple from the underneath, but that is exactly what I need. I have applied some foam over the um, creepy forest window and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another three layers at the top of the card. Then I'm going to attach this panel to the card base and press it down with a large acrylic block. I'm applying some wilted violet distress oxide ink onto my frame and then I'm going to attach it to the card with the thin strips of um, foam tape. These dies are from Doodle Jack O'Lantern's die set, also by Poppy Stamps. I'm applying wilted violet with my finger, just as I did with the windows of the house. And then I'm going to darken up the edges with black suit. Now I'm sticking those jack-o'-lanterns onto my card with some liquid glue, which is Ranger Multimedia Matte. My card is nearly finished. The only problem is because I had so many layers, they are visible from the side of the card. But there is a solution to this problem. I will need a couple of strips of black cardstock and I'm just uh, bending one of the corners and uh, start sticking it to the sides of the card using the hot glue. I'm using hot glue because it dries instantly. I'm sticking the strip down, then I'm bending it over the corner and continue applying the glue and sticking down the strip. When the paper strip ends, I'm uh, trimming it and switching on to the next strip. When I'm done, I'm trimming off the excess and my shadow box card is finished. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If you would like to see more, here are some projects that you might like. Have a wonderful day and I'll be seeing you soon.